The Pro Yaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 19, Pythagorean Win Expectancy. Happy Children's Day, everyone. Please forgive the fancy duds, but, uh, you know, my daughter is performing in the Shonan Youth Orchestra con- uh, Children's Day concert this afternoon, so I'm kind of proud of her. Nonetheless, there was an incident yesterday, Saturday, May 4th, That got me thinking about the Pythagorean wins expectancy. Now, I'd heard Jim Allen mention it a few times on the Japan Baseball Weekly podcast, so I looked it up, and uh, here's what I found. So I'm reading the newspaper, Tanishige, only three more hits to 2,000. We lost 4 nothing. Luna's big three-run home run. He's hitting 405 on the season. Uh, Morgan uh, didn't quite play very well in left field. Nakahata Kantoku took responsibility for it, thinking he could play left. And where are the standings? Ah, here we are. Uh, Yokohama, a uh, half a game ahead of Chunichi. And Chunichi, wow, they've scored 120 runs and only given up 111? Why are they in last place? As any decent researcher in this day and age would do, the first place I looked was Wikipedia. Wikipedia defines the original Bill James version of the Pythagorean win expectation as being wins equal to the runs scored squared divided by runs scored squared plus runs allowed squared. Very simple formula. Um, And of course, this is just the factor for the wins you multiply that by the number of games to get the projected number of wins expected. So that's what I did with Chunichi's numbers. Uh, They had played 31 games through May 31st, allowing, or scoring rather, 120 runs while allowing only 111. Yet they were in last place. How can they score so many more runs and still be in last place? Well, I figured that the win expectancy must be high. However, when I plugged in the numbers, I found that they they were expected to have won four wins more than they actually have this season. And that's probably why they find themselves in last place. And so... While I was doing this study on Saturday, Chunichi got blown out by the Bay Stars. (laughs) And uh, Bay Stars beat them, what was it, 11 to 1, I think. So the numbers have slightly increased since then. And... uh, We can put them side by side here. So, today, um, May 4th, their numbers are just a little bit different. Um, 121 runs scored to 122 runs allowed. Now, this is inverted. So, here I kind of expected to see that plus four to turn into a negative number. But if they were expected to have won four games and they only played one more, it does kind of make sense that they only lost one game from from what was expected. And this Pythagorean expectation actually worked out correctly. And then I realized that... One of the governing variables is the number of games played. Of course, when they only had 31 games played, it uh, said, well, they should have won 17 with this run differential. Now it's saying they should have won 16, so it's adjusting to be closer to their actual wins, which remains 13. But uh, let's look at some of these other numbers. I see some 
numbers that are way off for Hanshin, uh, Yakult, um, oh, Yomiuri, they were uh, estimated to be way more. Uh, Cebu, SoftBank, these are some pretty wildly different numbers. So, just looking at uh, this chart, it's not all that easy to tell what's going on. So let's categorize it by year. And looking at it by year, we see that a lot of these really big errors, like in double-digit errors, are happening in 2011 and 2012. Now, what is it about the 2011 and 2012 seasons that was different? First of all, there was the new ball. The new ball is probably um, creating a very large discrepancy, and something's going to have to be done to better rectify these numbers with the new ball. But that's not all. Look at the number of ties there were in previous years. Okay, 2009, well, Yomiuri had a lot of them. Um, 2010, maximum of five was SoftBank, not a big deal. But with the earthquake and power savings and the three-and-a-half-hour rule from 2011, the number of ties exploded. And that may also be a factor in 2011 and 2012 not falling under the standard Pythagorean ex win expectations formulas. And this year, yeah, we only have 29 to 31 games so far, but the numbers are back on track. And we've still got the new ball, but the three-and-a-half-hour limit has been eliminated and the number of ties has greatly decreased. So, uh, just a quick rundown on uh, what I did here. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, the, the green column is the standard Pythagorean expectations. The blue column, EW2 for expected wins, second edition, I guess, um, is using the formula that is used by um, BaseballReference.com. And it is, instead of squaring the runs scored and runs allowed, it's raising it to a power of 1.83 and multiplying by the number of games played to get the second column. And really, the uh, squaring it or raising it to the power of 1.83, I'm really not seeing much of a difference. Uh, Hiroshima in 2010 was different, but not really much difference. Nippon Ham was slightly more accurate. Uh, Oryx in 2009 actually got worse. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a bad formula. And then the Pythagorean Port formula by Clay Davenport, where the exponent is a variable based on each team's uh, runs allowed and runs scored. Um, I plugged this one in, and it actually got much, much worse. And I think that's another thing that I may need to investigate sometime in the future. I have no idea why, but this formula was awful. I mean, it was wor consistently worse by um, a factor of probably one and a half times, 
to two times. Really bad. Did not work for Japanese baseball at all. Um, it may work for Major League Baseball. And the third column, the purple one, I adjusted each team's exponent according to the Pythagorean Pat formula developed by David Smith. And this one is pretty consistently the same or better. Um, is off, you know, they're all really pretty much the same. I'm amazed at how the simple standard formula is very close to what all of these other ones uh, come out to be. But, uh, yeah, that uh, was interesting. And, of course, the findings with uh, Chunichi having gone uh, one blowout, having their entire score turned around, and still coming up with a positive, um, a net positive number of expected wins, was uh, pretty interesting. And now it's time to take a look at the pocket calendar. Coming up tomorrow, May 6th, will be the latest episode of Japan Baseball Weekly Podcast with Jim and John. Uh, this week, Jim will be having a discussion with Vladimir Koko Ballantin of the Tokyo Yakult Swallows. The two will most likely discuss the interview. Then it's on to the big news of Mr. and Godzilla at Tokyo Dome being rewarded or awarded. Uh, they're planning on discussing the 2000 Hitman and a little bit of defense. As always, if you have any other uh, suggestions or knowledge of other Pro Yaki related events, please let us know on the ProYaku community on Google+. And that wraps it up for this week's ProYaku report. Until next week, have a good one. Take care.